Rub up your engines! Zach says, I got a 2021 Kia Soul. It's burning oil. Dealership didn't do anything except a software update. Now it's burning oil and they're giving me the runaround. Where do I do? Well, build yourself a time machine, go back in time, and do not buy that Kia. Get a Toyota or a Honda instead. That's the way Kia is, you know. They got their, if it doesn't burn a quart of oil every thousand miles, we're not going to fix it, blah, blah, blah. And this is the 2021. You just wait. They'll probably recall them all just like they did before. The main thing that you can do now is complain to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Dot org. They got a website where you can complain. Anybody you know has one of those complaints. Get so many thousands of complaints, they put an investigation. And then they'll probably have to recall all those stupid things because they weren't made right. That's key. They just don't make them right. They've always had piston ring problems. You think we had problems? We fixed them now. No, they don't. They're just making them too cheap. Whoever they're buying them from. Fruit of my lips says a 2013 Lexus RX 350 20 thousand with 100,000 miles. Is it worth it? All right. Everything's going for too much money these days. I mean, to me, that's insanity, but that's the way the world goes. Get a mechanic to check it out before you buy it. I'm just working on one today. It's a 2008, and guy bought it at a Toyota deal, and they put the big sign. As is, no warranty, right? Thing starts running bad. I pull out the spark plugs. They're completely coated with oil and carbon. It's an oil burner. The previous owner probably had hardly ever changed the oil. It's too late. Now the engine's worn. He got screwed over. Lexus makes very good cars, but they have to be maintained like any other car. You don't know what those people do. And a lot of people that buy expensive cars, they don't maintain it all. Mine's an assault guy. They ran a saber saw company in Buffalo. I was a kid. He came to my father's garage all the time. Cadillac, like the oil's there. You want to change it? He said, nah, nah. He said, I just lease these things. I'm never going to change the oil. The guy drove it for two years. He never even changed the oil in it. He only added it as it burned out, right? He didn't care. He was a rich guy who ran a company. It was nothing to him. He said, hey, I'm just leasing it. It's not mine. No, I don't care. You know, then the poor sucker that bought it after him got it up with an oil burning Cadillac. So often, people with rich cars don't spend any money maintaining them. So you want to get it checked by a mechanic first. And if they say it's good, they're good cars. The money, you can't do anything about that. But you'll want to get it checked out first. Jason, who says, Scotty, what do you think of an 08 Volvo S60 for 3000 Canadian dollars? Well, the S60s are actually pretty strongly built vehicles. Now, they're Volvos, they're European cars, they can be extreme money pits if they break down, but they also can be very well made. And I know what things cost in Canada. $3,000 in Canada is nothing for a car. You got to take it to a mechanic like me to check it out before you even think about buying it, because if it has an engine or transmission problem, you could spend three, four, five times that fixing it. But if he says, no, it's a pretty good shape, it's a good interim car. You can drive it for a while and see what happens. They are luxurious cars, but if he says the engine or train has got problems, run away, run away. Now, a lot of them have air conditioning problems, but you're in Canada, so what the heck? It doesn't get that hot there. You can roll the windows down in the summer. It's not like you're in Texas. <laughs> John Tesh says, what are your thoughts on a 2022 Toyota GR86? Yeah, you know, the Gazoo Racing part of Toyota, they make some pretty interesting vehicles. Not given away, they're very expensive, but they do zoom around. Now, of course, realize it's a Subaru. It's not a Toyota. Subaru makes them. They don't sell that many sports cars, so Toyota decided, well, our little one will make a Subaru. We'll pay them to build it, and our bigger one will pay BMW, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with their previous six-cylinder sports cars. It's completely a BMW. They're okay cars. Spending that kind of money, they're cool looking, sharp. You want a little sporty car? You know, just realize it's not really a Toyota. So if you have problems and it's because of the Subaru's engine and transmission, don't come whining to me because it really isn't a Toyota when it comes down to it. Dean Trejo says, I got a 99 Sienna XLE with 225,000 miles. My daughter damaged it in a wreck for about 2,500 bucks. Should I fix it? Well, sure. Why not? Because everything's going for an insane insane money. And I've seen people buy those things like that for twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 these days. So even if you don't want to keep it, fix it and sell it. Because people are looking for minivans now. And the Sienna is the best minivan out there. And if you say it's 2500 bucks, is that like the insurance type deal? Go around to body shops and if you're paying out of your pocket, say, yeah, I'm paying out of my pocket. I don't care if you put used parts or whatever on, you get a much better price than you were if it's an insurance job where they rake the insurance companies over the coal and make up parts that they put on. No one checks it half the time. But if you're paying out of pocket, say, look, I'm paying out of pocket. See what kind of deal can you, I don't even know if I'm going to fix it. And his choice then is either he'll make some money off of you or if he wants too much, he won't make any money at all. So 
A lot of times that'll work. Chad Fortune said, Scotty, my mom bought a Honda CRV 2017 with a 1.5 liter turbo, 160,000 kilometers, and bought it for 25,000 bucks. What do you think about that? Oh man, true, 160,000 kilometers, paid 25 grand. Yeah, the prices have gone insane. Now, that particular engine may have a problem with the oil dilution. Make sure to use as that new 0W16 GF6 oil. That was made for those so they don't have the oil dilution problem of gasoline diluting the oil and getting by the piston ring. Make sure that she uses that 0W16 GF6 oil. Now, I've had customers who told them they didn't have any problems when they switched to that oil. Do that. That's the main thing. Christ, you can't do anything about that. Rodrigo Moreno says, I got a Toyota Tacoma 2002. It feels like it wants to jerk like a dancing horse. I cleaned the air sensors, cleaned the throttle, don't know if it's a fuel pump or ignition coils. All right. Well, things need to be tested. You don't want to just guess. If you find a mechanic like me, we hook up our scan tool, go for a road test. We can look at the data, see what's going on. If you got ignition coils, it would show misfires on the ones that are misfiring. That's what the scan tools are for. Say there wasn't any data to 2002. Let's say there aren't any codes. Odds are it's probably the fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter because that's an old Toyota. The computer has no idea in that vehicle what the fuel pressure is. So if it's low, it'll jerk like a buck and bronco, but it won't trip any codes because the computer doesn't know what the fuel pressure is. So if you don't have any codes, change the fuel filter first. That might fix it. And if not, pressure test the fuel pump to see if it's bad. George Darby says, Scott, I'm in the market for a used snowplow truck. Looking at Facebook Marketplace. Why are things to look for so I don't get ripped off or buy a bad truck? All right. You need a truck that's powerful. You need a lot of power to have snow pushing. Snow. You also need a vehicle that doesn't have a rotten frame. That plow is bolted to the frame. The frame's rotten. It'll fly right off when you push stuff, right? So you got to check for rotten stuff. You got to make sure the transmission is good because it's pushing all that extra weight. And basically, you're going to have to find a four-wheel drive one and realize you're going to spend some pretty pennies because I've seen people look for them. When I was in Rhode Island, and man, they were paying top dollar for that stuff. If you're really looking at it in the long term, you might just bite the bullet and buy a new one and then keep it forever. Because if you got to pay 20, 30 grand for some used piece of junk, you might as well go out and buy a new one and bite the bullet and then keep it for years and years and years and years because it's hard to find. But if you are going to look, make sure it's not rusted frame. Make sure the engine and tranny are in good shape. Garrison says, I got a 1991 Geo Prism with 112,000 miles. Did I do good for 800 bucks or did I screw myself? Does it run and go under the road by itself and shift gears? If it does, you got a decent deal. You get a car that runs for 800 bucks these days with only 112,000 miles. Now, the Geo Prisms weren't the greatest cars in the world, but uh, they were transportation to get you from here to there, you know, and they weren't terrible. They have a few Toyota parts on them, some of them, but uh, for 800 bucks and it runs, you can't even complain. Even if it was a Chrysler and it ran, I'd say, with that mod and it runs and shifts, you got a deal these days. Guillermo Scotty, I have a 2019 Camry, 36,000 miles. When should I change the coolant in it? Okay. That's got very good coolant. It can last well over 100,000 miles. But they tell you you're supposed to change it every 10 years, right? And yours is 2019, so don't worry until 2029. <laughs> <laughs> the way you're driving, you'll never make it to 100,000 miles, probably. It's either 100,000 miles or 10 years. You don't have to do anything now. Toyota uses what's called hybrid organic acid technology coolant, which can last a really long time. It's super expensive, but it really lasts a long time, and it doesn't corrode stuff. You got to use it because it keeps the aluminum from corroding. Aluminum doesn't rust, but it pits and corrodes just as bad as steel rusts, and especially fresh enough that the anti-wear additives haven't all worn out from time. Louis says, Scotty, I got a 2011 Chevy Impella when I turn the steering wheel, it makes an awful noise. I got the rack and pinion and water pump changed last year. All right, well, the water pump has nothing to do with steering. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you really meant the power steering pump. I don't know. GM's notorious in that. And if you did have it replaced, that probably means it broke again, because here's what a lot of people do. People generally put in rebuilt ones. Well, ha, who rebuilt it? Some clown? I find that the rebuilt stuff generally won't last 20, 30 percent, if that, as long as the original one did. They don't rebuild them all that well. So it could very well be the same problem you had before. You don't want to go too cheap. Earlier said, well, this mechanic's charging me too much for parts. It's like, well, if he's using quality parts, that's what you want. Don't compare it to the cheapest parts you can buy. If you want to buy the cheapest parts you can buy, you're going to be replacing them over and over and over. Like, say, you want to buy a car, people, oh, the Kia is cheaper. I'll buy a Kia. I said, yeah, but if you buy a Toyota and lasts you 20, 30 years, and a Kia lasts you six years, and you buy three Kias versus one Toyota, you're really not making out all that well, even though you saved in the beginning. Garrison's Madhouse says, Scotty, I got a 2020 Honda Civic. With the CVT transmission, is it worth to do a manual transmission swap? No, it's a gigantic pain in the butt. It is just one gigantic headache. You would have so much 
aggravation. You'd want to kick yourself. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.